Karate Kid is a popular movie franchise which started in the 80s with The Karate Kid. Its highs are very high, but also its lows are quite low, which makes for a very diverse list that I have for you today. On New Year's Day, the third season of Cobra Kai dropped onto Netflix after having its first two seasons aired on YouTube Red Original. This show is heavily connected to these Karate Kid movies. So following the release of that season and the videos that I have made from it, I thought now is a great time to rank the Karate Kid movies. So if you're interested in any of those Cobra Kai videos, they're my two previous videos. I'll leave a link in the description and a card right up in the corner here. But without further ado, let's get into my Karate Kid ranking. Coming in at fifth and last place is the next Karate Kid. This is just when the franchise had worn too thin. Obviously the main problem here is that Ralph Macchio isn't in this movie as Daniel LaRusso. And to fill that void they bring in Hilary Swank, but she just makes for this really annoying and unlikable character who just has a moan for no reason. There's a lot of similar traits in that department as Daniel LaRusso, but just when it's done here, it just, just really feels annoying and unlikable. Whereas Daniel LaRusso, you could kind of sense that it was who he was. It just feels a bit unnecessary here. The plot itself, it just feels very, very odd. There's this whole thing about Hilary Swank's character having this bird, which I can understand, but it, they've used it as like a driving force for her and throughout this story and it just seemed really odd to have that and even so the pacing's really off here it doesn't really feel like it ever gets going constantly going 10 miles per hour especially when she can goes and hangs out with the monks the film itself is just very underwhelming and it doesn't really feel like she's gone on such a journey like daniel larusso has to learn karate and it doesn't even feel that rewarding in the end i know it's said that she had karate training when she was younger here but she just seemed to master it too easily, too quickly for it to feel any bit realistic like it has in the original. Mr. Miyagi is still great here, he doesn't disappoint, he feels very normal, but it's kind of hard when he doesn't have that sidekick who he connects with just, just like he did. Once again I'm mentioning the original. The character Eric feels very forced to be like a love interest, you know they've been love interests in the previous movie so far, so it feels like it has to do that again. It does actually have to, but it does it anyway and it doesn't feel real one bit, it feels very tacked on. And moving on to other characters, the bullies or the villains. I thought I'd seen some over the top ones in this franchise but these ones were the most over the top and unnecessary. The motives are dumb and just what they do, they hold too much of a grudge which doesn't feel real at all, like I've said a lot in this. So overall, a really forgettable and irrelevant movie in this franchise which thankfully ended the franchise there and then for about 20 years. Coming in at fourth place is The Karate Kid Part 3. All I can say is this is just filled with stupid ideas from start to finish. Like in the first place, Daniel LaRusso, he has these college funds and he took a bit out of it in the previous movie to travel with Mr. Miyagi. But here he just spends the whole lot to start Mr. Miyagi a business which he already said no to. Obviously, deep down, it's his ideal dream, but he already rejected it. So it seems like Mr. Miyagi has no choice and it just if such a weird idea to waste your future money for what decides your future on a business for a, for a small business or your friend who's looking to retire somewhere. The villains are ridiculously cartoonish, even Crease at times. It's funny comparing this Crease to the one getting Cobra Kai, but the main villain, I don't remember his name, but he's just so, so over the top. It seems like he snorts a line before doing each scene, and it comes across really cheesy and cartoonish. To be fair to this movie, I thought Daniel and Jessica's relationship or friendship was actually quite good and one of the best parts, if not the best part, as well as the relationship between Daniel and Mr. Miyagi. Like usual, that does not disappoint here. Those were things that shone out of this movie, but unfortunately because these villains and some of the plot decisions were so ridiculous, it was hard to take this one seriously. Even the, the final fight 
I found very ridiculous and just like most of the movies, I don't get why the villains are so over the top and literally looking to kill Daniel. Coming in at third place, I have The Karate Kid, the 2010 remake, or also known as The Kung Fu Kid. I understand for more attraction and convenience that they titled this The Karate Kid, but it's very, very irritating and straight up dumb. It's a movie called The Karate Kid, which doesn't actually have karate in it. It's about Kung Fu. We've literally got a clickbait movie right here. And I know it's not trying to be like a, a scene for scene remake of the original, that's why they've made it Kung Fu, but if that's the case, just change the title. The Kung Fu Kid's fine, it, it, maybe not. As good as the action was in this movie and the karate, I mean, Kung Fu, with the characters being so young that are fighting, it can actually feel a little bit uncomfortable watching Jackie Chan beat them up or them fighting each other. Like, there's literally a scene where Jackie Chan beats up a bunch of 12 year olds. But that's not the main problem I had with them being that young. It's also that I didn't find them intimidating at all like I had in the original Karate Kid movie. It's hard to portray a rivalry when the rivals don't speak to each other and they don't even speak the same language. So for that, the hate towards Jure actually seems really unnecessary. Like a lot in this in these movies. Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan do a good job. They both fit their roles really well. As much as there's a lot of comparisons to the original and you see in some scenes, at least their relationship feels different to Mr. Miyagi and Daniel LaRusso. For me, that was the best thing about this movie was their relationship and their performances. And on top of that, just some of the scenery is the best we've seen in this whole franchise but unfortunately for me there's just too much in this movie which doesn't work and as I mentioned that title really irritates me and maybe it's just 20 minutes too long as well. Coming in at second place is The Karate Kid Part 2. The scenery here is very beautiful. I know from a charmer, just like in the remake. Although it's in a new environment, which is very interesting and has nice ties to its culture, which, which we get to learn about, and the origin of Miyagi, as well as how he learnt karate. In terms of a Karate Kid movie, it lacked a lot of that intrigue and that charm, that interest we have in the movie itself. At times, I found it a bit boring. The villains again, exaggerated for little reason. There was a plot about Mr. Miyagi bringing shame to himself and his family for something to do with a woman and years later he returns. I get shame is a big thing in some places but here to get back at Mr. Miyagi they're literally damaging all the crops food for this village. People are already struggling to eat so they're literally being very evil for no reason. Obviously it affects Mr. Miyagi as he feels responsible for that and it's his neighbours and such but I don't see what they would gain from that by destroying everything in the town just because Mr. Miyagi tried to marry this girl who was meant to marry someone else and that it just finds it hard to feel as realistic and what I liked so much about the first one is how real it felt we'll get onto that in a sec but a lot of that just went out the window, especially when Chosen was involved. But it still does have some magic. Daniel and Mr. Miyagi once again, great chemistry. It feels like they continued their relationship perfectly from the first one. It doesn't feel like a gap also as it ties into the, the end of the first movie as well. But I actually have a lot of respect for this movie and I praise it for trying something very different where it did go right in some areas but wrong in others. Which means coming in at first place is The Karate Kid, the original, the one to start this whole franchise off. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the easiest top pick I've ever had to do for any of my rankings. You'll see when I show the ratings at the end. This movie perfectly balances karate and emotion. That emotion being Mr. Miyagi and Daniel LaRusso's relationship. They're both missing that figure in their life who feels that role for Mr. Miyagi, he doesn't have a child. Daniel kind of feels that role in a sense, and Daniel doesn't have his father around 
so Mr. Miyagi kind of fills that void too. They have such a great and real friendship, one of the more realistic ones I've seen on screen, especially for such a big age gap between the two. The sports side of it was all great and very interesting, but this itself just feels more than a sports movie. It has real heart to it. The story is well handled, which makes it hard to not enjoy this movie. The climax had me so engaged where I haven't been engaged for movies I've seen this past year as much. The karate itself, it actually wasn't that great, but just all the lead up and anticipation to this moment. Even though I could predict what the outcome would be, I was very nervous and a huge sigh of relief and satisfaction when this movie's climax ended. Overall, just everything feels like it would actually happen, which I can't say for a lot of things on this list. And it made for one of the most satisfying movies I've ever seen. So there is my ranking of the five Karate Kid movies. I'm gonna leave my ranking up on screen again with the scores next to them so you can see how much of a quality gap there is and I can tell you there is a big gap between my first place and my second place. Let me know what your ranking would be down below and if you've seen Cobra Kai at all. But anyways, I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you in my next video.